Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at Cameron MCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk to you about installing Git. And I've done a few tutorials on how to install Git, but things have changed a lot lately. So I just wanted to point out some of the changes. If you haven't installed Git in a while, I think you might learn a thing or two. Installing Git on Windows isn't quite as straightforward as it used to be. Here I am on Git's downloads page, and I'm going to do a Windows Git installation. I'm running a 64-bit operating system. I think this page will work that out, and you can see that the download has already started. It's not very big, just 46.3 megs in size. And on my lightning fast high speed internet, that's almost instantaneous. Now I'm gonna do the installation here, just double click on the exe file, which should be no surprise to anybody. Get the GP, GPL license here, click next. And the first decision I'm gonna make is not to install into program files. I like to know where my git is installed. So I like to install it into underscore tool slash git. And I also don't like uppercase letters in file and folder names just because that causes problems for me in scripts in the future. So there we go. I've just changed the directory. You can take the default. That's no big deal. Notice that it's going to automatically install the git bash shell and the git GUI for me. I like those tools. So I'm going to accept those defaults. It's going to create the start program. That's fine with me. Now notice right here, I've got the option to change the editor that I use when I work with Git. That's pretty cool. If you've already got Notepad++ installed, you can actually use Notepad++ as your editor. So if you have to do a merge, if you have to, to do a commit, rather than having to struggle with Vim or struggle with Sublime or something like that, uh, you can just use Notepad++. So I'm gonna select that myself. Now you do have to have Notepad++ installed. Now here's actually an interesting window. All enterprise software vendors are moving away from the term master. It just has a, a historically laden negative connotation with the term master and slave relationship. So right now, GitHub, when you create a brand new repository in GitHub, the branch that it creates for you is not called master, it's called main. And we're gonna see more and more of that in the future as, as software companies move away from the master-slave terminology. Right now, the default seems to be master, um, but you can override that maybe to match your new GitHub repositories with main or something else. Nothing special about that master branch uh, other than it's just the first one created. I'm gonna leave that as that is for now. The next thing, do you want Git added to your path? I'm definitely going to do that. Now, there's also this option here to add some extra Unix tools to the Git Bash shell. I like doing that. If you're a Java developer, Jakarta EE developer working on Unix, um, or even interacting with remote Unix systems, I definitely select that option. I'm going to click Next here as well. Use OpenSSL. I'm fine with that. Make sure that when I do check outs, it's Unix style, check in is Windows style. I like that default as well. Use Minty uh, for the console. I'm gonna select that. Now here's an interesting one. Notice that I've got the option to do a fast forward merge when I do a pull, or I can choose to rebase or try to do a fast forward and have it fail if the fast forward doesn't work. The default and what most people are gonna be comfortable with is just doing a fast forward merge. So I would select that one. Uh, rebasing can throw people off, especially if you're a beginner with Git. However, rebasing does create a cleaner commit history than doing merges. But I'm gonna accept the default there. Uh, here's another thing, the way that credentials are managed on Git and third-party tools like GitLab and GitHub are changing, being updated, being improved, however you want to frame it, it is changing. And one of the ways it's changing is to prefer the Git Credential Manager. I'm going to accept that as well, just so that I am up to date with current trends. I'll enable some file system caching, although I don't think I'm going to have any huge repositories where that's going to make a difference for me. But you can imagine if you're working on you know, the Git repository for the Linux distribution, that it might be a big repo. So caching might improve your performance. Not going to use any experimental consoles, just going to click install and allow this installation tool to run. And there you go, installation is complete. Do I wanna run the bash shell? I'm gonna do that, but I'm not gonna do it here. I'm gonna deselect that. 
And I've got my downloads folder right there. I'm just going to do a little bit of playing around. Notice if I right click and bring up the context menu, I've got the option to open up a Git bash shell. I'm going to select that. I'm just going to do some playing around here, but I'm going to do Git version, see what version of Git I'm on, 2.29. I'm going to see if Git actually works. I'm going to do a Git init command. Looks like it's going to initialize a Git repository. I'll go touch hello.txt and do a Git add command. Looks like I can add files successfully. Do a Git commit and forget to put in the dash M switch. Oh, I've got to do a little git config on my username. So I will do that command. Do that command as well. And now go for that commit. And you'll notice now when the commit comes up, it actually opens up Notepad++ rather than Vim or Nano. So I'll just leave that as it is, close the window, and that will force the commit. I oh, didn't type anything in there, so I'll just do that commit again. And I'll say, it's good. Got to put some message in there. Click Control S, close the window. And now I've actually got the commit. I can do a git status. And I can do a git ref log. And we can see that git is 100% working. And there you go. That's how easy it is to install a little bit more modern version of the git version control tool. And there you go. That's how easy it is to install Git on Windows. Now, if you found this tutorial interesting, head over to theserverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials on enterprise software development, version control, GitHub, DevOps, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And hey, why not subscribe on YouTube?